Hi there, my name is Charlotte. I love colorful and sparkly makeup and I thought I'd come on here to do the makeup collection tag. I'm filming this at night so the lighting is not super great but I figured it wouldn't be that important for this kind of video so I decided to <laughs> plow ahead. Um, this tag was created by somebody who no longer creates videos on YouTube but I've seen this going around and I in particular um, saw Hope Miss Tom, Too Much Tosh, and Sarah Rose do this tag and was inspired by them to do the same. I'm new on YouTube and I've obviously never done a tag before but I thought that this one might be a good one to do as almost like an introduction to where I'm at currently as a makeup lover and a makeup collector. So the first question is, how long have you been collecting makeup? Um, I didn't start getting into makeup until like 2017 and by into makeup, I mean basically I was like learning how to put on eyeshadow, like, you know, the deep color here, the light shimmer here. Like I was basically using the little diagrams on the back of drugstore eyeshadow palettes. So yeah, I was wearing eyeshadow for the first time in 2017. I didn't wear any other makeup really except mascara and eyeliner. And I started like branching out and being interested and in exploring and trying new things in makeup around 2019. But I would say it's not until 2020 that I sort of started collecting makeup in any real sense. At that time, I was collecting different colors of eyeshadow and I did have the sense that I wanted to have a complete collection and that I wanted to have every color with which I could possibly want to make a look. So, you know, keeping in mind that I like didn't wear certain colors, I wanted to own options, like, you know, matte shimmers of every color that I would want to wear, which is already kind of a tall order. <laughs> so that's when I think I started to sort of have collector mindset about my makeup for the first time. Okay, what kind of collection do you have? And the suggestions are minimal, utilitarian, aesthetic, historical, etc. I would say that my makeup collection is evolving, which considering that I'm sort of skeptical of consumerism and want to pace myself as a consumer and, and be mindful of my consumption footprint, so I got on social media sort of with the idea of creating anti-consumerist makeup content and then went on a no-buy and sort of during that time reassessed how I felt about my makeup collection and where I wanted it to go. And I found that I was not really happy with the collection I had. I think now my project as a makeup collector and as a person on social media has sort of shifted to rather than thinking I have everything and that's why I need to stop consuming now I think I, I acknowledge that my collection is not perfect for me and it doesn't include all the things I want and I need to reconcile that fact with the fact that I can't just buy everything and I can't buy everything all at once so I think that's sort of become my project as a makeup collector. But even so, my collection is evolving to include, you know, more interesting and textured formulas. Um, it's evolving from an entirely drugstore collection into one that is just more concerned with having high quality formulas, whether they're high end or affordable. So yeah, I think I would say that my collection is evolving. <laughs> So the next question is, are you a completionist? And my answer is no, thankfully, because I think that would be a pretty dangerous mindset for me personally to enter um, as somebody who struggles with controlling myself sometimes when it comes to makeup purchasing. Um, yeah, I think like I like having variety in my makeup and I do like, I do enjoy a lot of colors of makeup, but within that, like I still have tastes and I know that not everything is gonna suit me and not everything is gonna fit with my taste. So I don't relate to the completionist mindset. Like to me, collecting all of the palettes in a line of eyeshadow palettes would be sort of like collecting all the concealers in a line of concealers. Like it doesn't really make sense. They're not all gonna work for me. They're not all made for me. Um, so yeah, I don't relate to the completionist mindset and I definitely wanna stay away from that personally. 
Um, how do you store or organize your collection? Um, <laughs> badly. <laughs> I currently store most of my makeup in the top drawer of my dresser and it's always kind of like bursting at the seams even though I've done multiple like reorgs within that space. I also have like an acrylic, a pretty small acrylic organizer on my dresser and then I have like just some random like setting sprays and like lotions, micellar water, <laughs> like on the dresser. I do want to do a big reorganization and like get maybe a train case for the makeup that I currently keep in the drawer and then just like dedicating the drawer to eyeshadow palettes. Um, in terms of eyeshadow, most of my eyeshadow is depotted into magnetic palettes and currently the eyeshadows that I have in like pre-made palettes are m most of them I have plans to depot them so and I like to organize those by color but as for the organization of my entire collection uh yeah it's not such a great situation right now and I do have plans to improve it what is your favorite thing about your collection um I don't know if this directly addresses the question, but I think I sort of recognized to myself surprisingly recently that, you know, makeup is a hobby for me. Wearing makeup is a hobby for me. And that having a collection of makeup to wear, enjoy, swatch, admire, <laughs> um, compare, that's part of that hobby for me. And I think that as I have gotten deeper into the makeup world and as my collection has grown as a result of that, weirdly I think like each piece of makeup is now more valuable to me than it was before when makeup was pretty utilitarian, even though I have much more makeup than I did then. Um, even though like today I spent $24 on an eyeshadow and I would never have dreamed of spending that kind of money on an eyeshadow. <laughs> At any other time in the past, I realized that the value that I'm getting now from that makeup as somebody who genuinely appreciates it and doesn't just use it for utilitarian reasons, like I, I truly am getting that value from it, I think. Um, and I don't know, I was just really, I think somehow realizing that like took a bit of a burden off of me because I think that I haven't totally shifted my mindset since I was a utilitarian makeup user and I'm still sort of judging myself against what I used to spend on makeup, the time I used to spend thinking about makeup. And I approach this with the sort of weird assumption that that is like somehow not okay to spend money or time on makeup just because it wasn't something that I was interested in in the past. So I think that seeing myself as a makeup collector has sort of allowed me to let go of the like weird moral standards of that previous version of myself, if that makes any sense. I don't need to live by those standards anymore because they simply don't apply to me and they don't describe the way I live or the way I feel about makeup or the way I collect makeup. <laughs> I hope this makes sense. What is your least favorite thing about or something to improve about your makeup collection? Um, yeah, I think I just like being on the no buy and assessing the actual objective quality of the makeup I own. I just want my makeup to be better, I think. And I feel that at this point, I, I yeah, I would really get the value out of better makeup that I wouldn't have in the past. So I'm expanding my makeup collection, particularly when it comes to eyeshadows, but I'm also looking to find blushes and complexion makeup that truly work well for me. And I am okay with the fact that curating and improving my collection is going to involve buying some makeup. I just need to approach that with care. Okay, what is the biggest category of your collection? Definitely eyeshadow. I do keep my eyeshadow depotted, so I count the pans. If you counted palettes, it's possible that lips would win out, but I don't know. Even that is doubtful. I'm going to say eyeshadow. What is the smallest category of your collection? 
I only have one powder and one setting spray, so those. Do you have a holy grail in your collection? I have definitely had many holy grails, especially from that time when I was not a makeup collector and I would just repurchase the same things. I think right now very little in my collection is not in danger of being replaced by something that I like better, but the closest thing I do still have to a holy grail would probably be this eyeliner from ColourPop. It's their liquid liner in the shade Grande, and it's the only thing I continue to repurchase from ColourPop, but I just like the specific tone of brown that this is. It's like a warm brown, but it's dark enough to look like a black from a distance. I don't know, I just find that it's the thing that like, that like looks impactful on my face, but not too harsh. And I'm open to finding a dupe of this, but I know that doing that would involve like purchasing a bunch of eyeliners that were in the wrong shade. And I'm just like not usually willing to do that. So for now, I'm sticking with this one. Do you ever wish your collection was bigger, smaller, or is it complete? Um, I agree with what a lot of other creators have said, which is that for a makeup lover, like your collection can never really be complete because by nature, we tend to be people who are interested in trying new things and over time our tastes are changing anyway. Um, I think Hope Mess Tom said something really eloquent about this. I will link all these videos I'm talking about down below if I remember. But yeah, Tom just basically acknowledged that their collection could never be complete and that there's a danger to that and I completely agree with that. Yeah, I don't think my collection is complete. I don't necessarily need it to be bigger than it is, although I'm okay with it being bigger if that's what, ha what happens, but I do just want it to be better. <laughs> like, I feel kind of dumb saying this because obviously, but I do truly feel like I'm at a place where I've like tasted, I've gotten a taste for formulas that are way better than those that make up the majority of my makeup collection. And yeah, and I'm, so I'm interested in just like replacing some of those older formulas and curating my collection into something that's full of things that I truly love. How often do you declutter makeup in your collection? Very rarely. Um, basically, when I do declutter something, it usually goes into a box in my closet and so I only truly really declutter when I move or when I have somebody specific in mind to pass something to. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not happy with that situation. I really need to go through that box and I also just probably need, need a better system for decluttering, but I get really attached to objects and I... I'm a sentimental person and even here like I'm shit talking my makeup collection saying it's like the worst but I, yeah I do have trouble letting go of things and I have attached like sentiment and nostalgia to a lot of makeup that I don't use and don't really need in my collection and I'm gonna have to come up with a system for getting that out of my house because I just don't have room. Do you ever get envious seeing other people's makeup collections? Yes, like, I feel like I'm coming off so whiny in this video, but yeah, I absolutely do, and that has been a big part of, you know, during my no-buy, I continued to watch makeup content, and especially at that time when I couldn't buy new makeup to emulate the things I was seeing in other people's collections, that was probably a good thing, but yeah, I would definitely get envious of certain libraries of beautiful shades that people had, specifically Hot Vegan Hannah. I think she has such a beautiful collection of eyeshadows and it's not that I need a bigger collection, it's just that I want things that are special and I feel like she has so many things that are special and I'm a little envious of it. The next question is related, it's who on YouTube has the best makeup collection video? And I don't really remember like specific collection videos that were explicitly collection videos, but Hot Vegan Hannah is definitely the person who comes to mind who has the kind of collection that I would love to have, um, specifically because she has this comprehensive collection of beautiful, special eyeshadows, and she has like a very small curated collection of complexion makeup, 
blushes, highlighters, stuff like that. And that's sort of where I would like my collection to be. I don't need a ton of variety in other areas of makeup, but I do want to have variety in my eyeshadows. And I love how special her collection seems. I love watching her swatch it. I liked watching her like big declutter video where she's comparing everything and getting rid of things that don't spark joy, like that aren't truly, truly special. Okay, the last question is, what is some advice you'd give to future makeup collectors? Um, so I'm definitely not an expert and like relative to a lot of other people, I'm a total noob. But I think the biggest thing I would say is something also similar to something that Hope Mess Tom said in their video, which is to not confuse um, loving makeup with buying makeup. Buying makeup can be really fun. Looking at reviews can be fun. It's obviously a huge dopamine hit to make a purchase, track an item in the mail, get it at your door, put it on your face for the first time. But that's not the same as loving makeup. And and frankly, I would say that buying makeup is not a hobby. Um, maybe that's harsh, but if that is your relationship to makeup, if it is mainly about a love of buying makeup, then I think maybe you should reassess and maybe you'd be a good candidate for a no buy. The other thing I would say, which is advice that I should be taking myself um, and I'm trying to take as, as I start to purchase makeup again after my no buy, is sometimes it's tempting to make a bunch of purchases at once, again, because of that dopamine hit and that is addictive and it can compound on itself. But if you're just making a bunch of purchases all at once, you're gonna be making less informed purchases than if you you know, bought one thing, tried it out, figured out if that is what you really want, um, and then moved on to the second purchase. If you're buying a bunch of things all at once, you might accidentally be buying dupes and you might accidentally be buying formulas and types of makeup that don't work for you and that you're not actually gonna end up liking. Again, like, I totally understand being in the frenzy of desire and of making a bunch of purchases and that's something I'm struggling with after my no buy. Anyway, I feel like this video has been completely rambly. Partly that's because exactly one million planes passed overhead while I was filming this and I kept having to stop the camera and like losing my train of thought. But I hope this made sense and I also hope it helps to situate myself and my channel within the context of like where I'm coming from as a makeup lover and how I'm planning to approach makeup going forward. Please like this video and subscribe, etc, etc. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here and I will see you next time. Bye!